Well, back to an eight-point bulge. Dudley going to find Hill. Short jump for the lane. Again, a six-point game. Now it's a four-point game. And don't look now, Jalen, it's a two-point game. And they say in basketball, sometimes you're open for a reason, and that's Grant Hill in this game. But he did a great job in the third quarter of making the Los Angeles Lakers pay. Hill was 6-7 of seven from the field, 14 points in the third quarter to tie it. And Steve Nash, we're at 90s, 90s going into the fourth quarter. Suns had to be feeling pretty good. Yes, and if Jared Dudley and Grant Hill are your best players and not Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire, Coach Bill Jackson will take it. You see going up for the uh, Leandro Barbosa going down hard, hit his head on a camera on the, the sideline there. Barbosa, the hard fall. You've been there. And you hate to see this because you want the media, the press, the cameras, everyone to get the footage that they need, but you have to back those people up just a little bit to avoid situations like that. And impact the game, impact the health of players. Kobe dribble behind his back, hits the jumper over Hill. And this is what you like about Kobe. Goes middle, behind the back, baseline, and when the tongue gets wagging, <laughs> you know Kobe's feeling good. Two minutes to play, you can see it's all over, but the crying, Lakers up 12. Lamar Odom, that didn't look lucky. Not at all. And the thing about the Los Angeles Lakers, they made a concerted effort not only to pound the paint, but to attack Amari Stoudemire defensively. There is your final score. The Lakers win 124-112. And I'm sure the Lakers will just tell you, hey, all we did was what we're supposed to do. We won our two home games. Lakers have won eight in a row, 10 straight at home. They're five and one against the Suns this season, including this postseason. How about Pau Gasol, 29 points, his second most points this postseason. The Suns have lost two straight for the first time. Got to go back to January. But Kobe is a great story. Look at his points. Only 21, but had a playoff career high, 13 assists in the victory. And look, it's the, the, the percentages from the floor, we talked about the defense, we talked about the, the fellas just asked uh, Coach Del Negro about having a home court advantage. But you watch these two games, it's hard to envision any scenario by which Los Angeles can't win two of the next five games. True? Yeah, they're in a position now, they're up 2 0. It's going to be very tough for the Phoenix Suns to win four out of five games. That which makes game three very important. If you're the Phoenix Suns, you want to come out and get off to a good start. And your fringe players, a guy like Shannon Fry, he allows you to play bigger when he's knocking down threes. When he's not in the lineup, you have to play Grant Hill at the four, who played very well in the third quarter, but it makes you so small up front, and the Lakers were allowed to dominate at that point. Well, well give me a positive that Phoenix is, t is taking out of this. Well, you know, nobody likes moral victories, you professional athlete types, hmm. but uh, the fact that they were 90 all going into the fourth quarter and then fell apart, is that something Phoenix can take a positive out going home? Jared Dudley was five for five from three. That's a positive. The way Grant Hill played, the way Dragic, his energy was there. He was only one for six from the field, but I like the fact that he's attacking. Those three guys are things you can feed off of. Jay Rich had a big game with 27 points. Normally, they play well when he scores over 20, but the key for the Suns is playoff time. You need your two all-stars to play like superstars. Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire, look for those guys to do that in game three. It's interesting to me that the team that's given the Los Angeles Lakers the most difficulty thus far in the playoffs is the youngest team. And now, granted, not everybody's got a Westbrook and a Durant, but is, is, there, is, there some, is there some strategy you can try to say, well, what did they do outside of go home where people were out of their skulls in Oklahoma City? Is there something you can take from what they did and try well, to put it into play? Well, Kevin Durant is a true MVP candidate. Yeah. When you have one guy that's going to score 30 points, that keeps you in the game, especially when the score is under 100. Then you have the matchup of athleticism at the point with Russell Westbrook. Obviously, Steve Nash, one of the top point guards in the game. He had 15 assists tonight, but he's not going to have the athletic dominance in the open court in particular over Derek Fisher and Jordan Farmer, who came off the bench and played well. So let me just trade for Durant before game three. <laughs> I don't think that's legal. So yeah, that, that can't happen. It's a bit of a problem.